Welcome back. We hope that you had a good afternoon yesterday and a good morning today, a good start. We had very productive concurrent sessions, so we hope that you enjoyed those as much as we did. And we're nearing the end of this UNESCO World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development. We've had such great and key input over the course of the last few days uh, from guests, from panelists, from ministers, and real concrete commitments on getting this ESD for 2030 roadmap into place. And and we've also had some very important input from you as well. And just some numbers, we had more than 2,800 participants on the uh, conference platform from 161 countries and uh, more than 10,000 viewers of the public live stream. So thank you for so many of you joining us and being part of this conference and helping it uh, become a success. Now, we did mention that one key outcome of this conference would be the Berlin Declaration. This is the document on the website, the outcome of the conference that you were able to comment on as well, and many of you did, and those were incorporated into this document, into this declaration. That will be presented in a moment. But first, we have three special rapporteurs who are going to give us a summary of this conference, give us their key takeaways of what they have learned and the most important points were for them. And I want to introduce them now to give us uh, their takeaways. First and foremost, Mr. Arjen Vels. He is a UNESCO Chair for Social Learning and Sustainable Development uh, at the University of Wageningen in the Netherlands. And then we'll also have Ms. Ruth Mulenga. She is a student at Copperbelt University. University in Zambia. And last but not least, we'll have Ms. Ronja Hallebach from UPAN. That is a German youth panel on ESD in Germany. First, I'll hand over to Mr. Vess. Thank you, uh, Ms. Samaskanda, um, for giving this opportunity to, uh, to reflect on the conference and some of the outcomes. I'd like to start my reflections with a famous quote by Greta Thunberg. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean, yet you all come to us, young people, for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. There have been many conferences like this one. The first major UN conference on the environment was held in Greta's native Sweden in Stockholm in, in 1972, almost half a century ago. We should ask ourselves what signs can be seen now that show that this is not another conference, another declaration, and another call for action. How can we make sure that these past three days have been more than empty words? Having hopped between sessions and having collected input from colleagues um, from around the world and note takers, I conclude that there are many hopeful signs that ESD, sometimes under different flags and labels, is now moving from the margins to the mainstream. This conference is showing that more and more governance are beginning to see and recognize the importance of quality education in helping citizens around the world become more curious, critical, committed, capable, and empathic citizens. Although there's also research presented at this conference that shows that despite some progress on the policy front, there's still a lot of work to be done here in the coming years. I will highlight a few hopeful trends that seem to emerge at this conference. And I realize that there are more, and after me, Ruth and Ronja uh, will also share theirs. First, whole earth. In many sessions, it's emphasized that education needs to restore the connection between people and planet and improve relations, not just between people with different backgrounds and different starting points, but also between humans and the non-human world. Nature is becoming more at the center and understanding that we are part of nature is becoming more at the center. This also implies that the SDGs should be seen as an interconnected web and not as another way of dividing up the world in silos. Systems thinking, place-based learning, connecting with indigenous perspectives are just some of the mechanisms that have been mentioned in various sessions. Second, whole community. Participants point out that local environments and communities with a wide range of stakeholders and existential issues are excellent spaces for social learning and contributing to meaningful change. It is within these so-called transition niches where people jointly explore issues around food, water, energy, climate, biodiversity, as well as issues around fairness, inclusion, and social and environmental justice. 
There's a lot of ESD happening in these so-called spaces in between that involve a mix of educational approaches, including citizen science. These learning communities are, can often take advantage of different kinds of knowledge, personal, scientific, indigenous, local, different forms of knowledge blending together. Third, the whole school. Clearly ESD is no longer a topic that needs to be added to a full curriculum, but rather it is a catalyst to redesign the way schools operate. In many sessions, the whole school approach is highlighted as a way to focus more on local issues, issues that are relevant to the life world of the students, but also as a way to bring in new forms of teaching and learning, such as inquiry-based learning, experiential learning, solution-oriented learning, and so on. These forms of learning all require boundary crossing between different subject areas, but also between school and community. And it is also good to see that in many countries, this approach is receiving policy support. In countries like Japan, Ghana, Norway, the Netherlands, but also in our host country, Germany, where some schools are introducing Friday, giving students four hours a week to make their own curriculum based on their own interests and concerns. Fourth, the whole brain. There's more talk within ESD about social emotional learning and embodied learning, where typically education centers on or focuses on cognitive learning. This implies creates more, creating more space for arts and the humanities, but also for asking different kinds of questions. As one of the presenters said, ask people not what they think or what they know, but ask them how they feel. Doing so will lead to a more holistic response that brings out the social, emotional and the cognitive in an integrated way. And it creates the possibilities for empathy and compassion, which are both critical to sustainable development. Fifth and last, the whole system. As one participant from South Africa put it, we can't take a piecemeal approach when trying to change an education system that has been formed over hundreds of years and needs to change urgently. It requires a reconfiguration of the whole system. This transgressive and transformative perspective seems to gain support also among policymakers around the world. Clearly, ESD is not just focusing on changing behavior as it used to maybe in the early days. It also focuses on engaging in, in, in capacity building, collaborative action for changing systems and structures, also economic structures, as has been pointed out in the sessions on circularity and on regenerative economies and cultures. This implies creating pedagogical spaces that invite and support such action. Let me end by hoping that in 2030, when we likely will have another conference like this one, that Greta Thunberg will be the opening speaker and will tell us how far we have come and that education indeed has been proven to be critical in turning us away from the pathway of self-destruction to the pathway of a more sustainable world for all. I would now like to hand the baton over to Ruth Mulenga. Ruth, please share some of your thoughts with all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Ian. Taking you back to the first day of the conference, many panelists were concerned about the urgent action to take in order to accomplish the ESG 2030 goals. Based on my observation, the first speaker highlighted the need of proper financial budgeting and improvement of digital tools for both the learners and teachers. He said, Resources are needed and we need to get schools online. This will allow us to scale up ESD teachers training. The second message which everyone brought on board, which was the common message each panelist brought on the table during this session was that ESD should have a holistic system of education to ensure that youths can address global challenges and promote global citizenship. The third speaker brought out a very good important called the PISA metrics. The presenter pointed out the issue of responsibility, where it lies and the need of firm commitment, enhancing international solidarity. 
and knowledge sharing which is needed to achieve the ESD 2030 goals. Going into day two, session five, this session really presented a number of initiatives aimed at tracking biodiversity loss and climate change to also pave a way of sustainability for future. Some challenges which were brought out were lack of financial resources, lack of access to information, lack and weak institutional capacity and support to name a few. This called out an urgent action which needs to encourage to reverse biodiversity loss is to have quality education, good governance and safeguard our common home. Yes. These were points highlighted by different speakers during this session. Over to you, Rona. Hi, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you all for an insightful conference. I had the chance to listen to many inspirational people that are implementing ESD. That gives me hope and motivates me to keep engaging for ESD. One thing I was really happy to observe was the presence of young people in the opening and the focus on young generations in many sessions I attended. There was a lot of talking about youth, how we should be empowered as change makers. But there wasn't so much talking with youth. I appreciate everyone who aims to prepare us to take actions. I just want to point out that we are already aware of the challenges. And while we want to continue learning, I believe that you can also learn from us. Because as far as I know, there's no great master plan to save this planet, but ESD is a common tool to figure out solutions together. Maria Oyala said yesterday, we should listen to young people. They already have the maturity and cognitive skills to understand global problems. To do so, active and institutional youth participation is needed. I am lucky to be part of the UPEN, which is an example for institutional and active youth participation. We give our best to enrich the German ESD community, which is reflected by the following words of the German, German Federal Ministry of Research. To have youth with, uh, with us is crucial. We need them. Their impatience helps us. They're inspiring. All I can add, we're happy to help. To conclude, I would like to share a thought from a fellow UPEN member. Imagine, she said, the Berlin Declaration would become a convention that puts ESD on one level with the Paris Agreement and the World Heritage Convention. As was stressed out countless times, we urgently have to implement ESD on every level. An international convention on ESD might sound like a dream today, but I would like to encourage us all to think big and live our dreams of a sustainable world and the transformation of our societies with ESD. Thank you. Thank you, Ronya, Ruth, and Aryan for sharing not just your key takeaways from this conference, but also those words of inspiration for moving forward. Now, I mentioned the Berlin Declaration as a key outcome of this conference. I'd like to bring in now Ms. Wiebeke Jensen, who's the Director of the Division of Peace and Sustainable Development at UNESCO, to present and endorse that declaration. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Sumi, and good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. We are about to finish three days of inspiring, substantive discussions where we have looked at ESD from many different perspectives. I think we can safely say that we have been touching on most aspects of the role of transformative education in promoting true sustainable development and spurring enhancement, <clears throat> enhanced environment and climate action. We have already heard uh, the summary of Professor Ayan Valls, the general rapporteur of the conference, and the two youth rapporteurs, Rus Molenka and Ronja Halabak. They provided excellent insights into the very rich discussions we've been having, and I thank you so much for that. 
One of the very tangible outcomes of these discussions and exchanges is the Berlin Declaration on Education for Sustainable Development, which I have the pleasure to briefly introduce and which has been available on the conference platform since a few days in the six UN languages. The declaration was drafted through a broad and inclusive um, consultative process in the months leading up to the conference itself. And it was led by a drafting group of UNESCO member states uh, representatives. There was one designated member for each of UNESCO's regional electoral groups, the host of the current and the previous world conference, namely Germany and Japan, uh, as co-chairs, as well as UNESCO secretariat. And the drafts prepared by the group went through various consultations. In the first phase, we, we uh, circulated the draft electronically to a wide group of ESD education and sustainability stakeholders. And in the second phase, the text was shared with all UNESCO national commissions and delegations. In addition, the drafting group members also shared the text widely in their regional groups. Over 160 comments uh, came in from 45 countries uh, through this process. And the drafting group attempted to be highly inclusive and made a strong effort to take all relevant comments on board while keeping the text coherent, readable, and impactful. I want to take this opportunity to warmly thank the members of the drafting group for their dedicated work and for the constructive spirit in which it was carried out. I also would like to thank everyone who has submitted comments. But let me briefly introduce the declaration text. The declaration starts with an acknowledgement of the dramatic interrelated challenges the world is facing. In particular, the climate crisis, mass loss of biodiversity, pollution, pandemic diseases, extreme poverty and inequalities, violent conflicts and other crises that endanger life on the planet. The declaration highlights education as a powerful enabler of positive change and spells out ESD as the foundation for the required transformation of our world, providing everyone with the knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes to become change agents for sustainable development. The declaration welcomes the new ESD 2030 framework and its roadmap for the implementation uh, as the implementation uh, guiding documents for the next 10 years to mobilize action on ESD. With the declaration, stakeholders make a number of commitments to take ESD forward. And I want to stress commitments made within respective mandates and areas of responsibility and taking into account needs capacities, available resources, and also national priorities. Some of the key commitments are to ensure that ESD is a foundational element of our education systems at all levels, with environmental and climate action as a core curricular uh, component. To implement ESD with joint emphasis on cognitive, social, emotional, and behavioral learning dimensions, including promoting the required political action to bring about necessary changes and harnessing the power of ESD for the redesign of our societies. To invest in the capacity building of teachers, recognizing that they play a crucial role in transforming education. Other commitments concern whole institution approaches, the availability of resources, empowering young people, prioritizing the marginalized, and ensuring collaboration between the education sector and other sectors that have an impact on sustainable development. The declaration ends with a commitment to take its provisions forward through other important processes, such as the COP26 in Glasgow this year and beyond. Before I close my intervention, let me again thank the drafting group and all of you who have contributed to this declaration. As we have received no objections or significant amendments in our rounds of consultations and discussions, I'm very happy that we can consider the declaration adopted. I'm convinced that we have a strong and impactful text, which will help all of us to further mobilize for transformative education for sustainable development. 
because as the declaration says, the time to learn and act for our planet is now. Thank you very much for your attention. And with this, I'm very happy to share with you a short video summary of the conference. Thank you. We, the participants who convened online from the 17th to the 19th of May 2021 for the World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development. are convinced that urgent action is needed to address the dramatic interrelated challenges the world is facing. For too long, we have continued business as usual. Our only home in the universe is this special place down here. Challenges that really concern me are, first of all, food and water security. Never have we needed education on climate change and sustainable development more than we do today. We are confident that education is a powerful enabler of positive change. Bildung schafft Chancen und Perspektiven für die oder den Einzelnen, aber auch für die Gemeinschaft. School is a place for education and the teaching of values. La lutte contre le réchauffement climatique commence dans nos écoles. Education for sustainable development is the foundation for the required transformation. This starts with transformative learning which empowers people to transform themselves and to take action to transform the world. Education for sustainable development will be at the core of reimagining education. ESC is the very education which equip learners with capabilities to respond to the unknown and abilities to transform society. We commit to ensuring that education for sustainable development is a foundational element of our education systems at all levels with environmental and climate action as a core curriculum component. Fight against climate change must have an education face and a teacher's voice in every area of the world. We will harness the power of education for sustainable development for the redesign of our societies. We know the value that Indigenous knowledge can offer. We will empower young people as change agents for sustainable development. There are no words for being too late, because if it's not us, then who else? We commit to taking the Berlin Declaration on Education for Sustainable Development and its provisions forward. We have a big common goal, namely the Bildung for Nachhaltige Entwicklung in the German Bildungssystem überall to verankern. The environment, uh, it is critical in education, but all the other ministries of education must also be in sync. The world must come together and cooperate in the implementation. We must ensure that education for sustainable development is embedded in all education systems worldwide. Transformative learning for people and the planet is a necessity for our survival and that of future generations. The time to learn and act for our planet is now. Incredible to see how many voices took part in this conference. So thank you to Ms. Jensen as well for her contribution and summary there. So where do things go from here? What are the next steps for ESD for 2030? Well, we have now five statements from member states that are making clear commitments to putting this roadmap into place. So let's start with those. First and foremost, we have Ms. Sarah Anyang Agbor, who is the Commissioner for Education, Science, Technology and Innovation with the African Union. Thank you very much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, Your Excellencies, Honorable Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, I am honored to speak here today on behalf of the Chairperson of the African Union Commission, His Excellency, Dr. Musa Faki Mohammed, to share with you some final thoughts on the closing of the UNESCO World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development, Education for Achieving 
the Sustainable Development Goals. This conference comes at a critical time when COVID-19 pandemic has had tragic impacts on human life and has threatened to reverse most of the progress we had achieved in education. It has challenged us to redesign our current paths, but also provided an opportunity for global change to build back better. We must now aim in transforming learning for our societies towards sustainability. This assets the role of transformative education and the ESD Berlin De uh, Declaration for Education for Achieving Sustainable Development Goals. The past three days' deliberations have indeed been fruitful and foregrounded the need for concrete and concerted efforts in building education systems that support learners to be responsible and active contributors to more sustainable societies and a healthy planet. We must also acknowledge that we still have a critical role to play. Country presentations at the conference mentioned some key challenges and opportunities at country level, including loss of biodiversity among other environmental challenges. It is imperative that the member states plans and commitments in addressing these challenges as made during the conference are followed through and implemented. Therefore, there is an urgent need to incentivize global level actors to support country level actions in the implementation of these commitments. In so doing, we also have to ensure that we are inclusive and leave no one behind. Concrete efforts have to be made to reach the poor and the student groups and, constitu and constituencies, including countries emerging from conflict and fragile states, especially Africa. Education is the greatest weapon that can transform the world, says Madimba Nelson Mandela. Therefore, quality education can be upscaled by the African Union DOTSS approach for a holistic system of education because new skills must be acquired through lifelong learning and adult education. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the African Union strongly believes that we must act urgently and now to tackle the common education challenges our continent is now facing that have been so eloquently presented at this conference. This is also echoed in the Continental Strategy for Technical and Vocational Education and Training to foster youth employment with a paradigm shift on the development of TV systems that prepare young people to become job creators rather than job seekers. The Continental Education Strategy for Africa 2016-2025, the African domestication and implementation of the SDG for Education 2030 agenda buttresses this point further. The strategy in one of its guiding principles considers quality and relevant education, training and research as core for scientific and technological innovation, creativity and entrepreneurship. This strategy is also aimed at providing the African continent with efficient human resources adapted to African core values. And its implementation requires that we as stakeholders work in coordination towards pursuing the development of various thematic priority areas of education for sustainable development. Education for sustainable development must be tech savvy. That is where the African Union digital transformation strategy becomes relevant. Thank you very much for the takeaway and outcomes. We cannot steal the dreams of the children and youth of Africa with empty words and not become cemeteries of workshops. Hence, we must walk the talk. So ESZ has to move toward the talk and AU Caesar is pushing the drive for member states to implement the talk. It is on education, it is through education that we can recover the post-COVID pandemic, education that speaks to skills and competencies. So sustainability, I agree, is only ensured by financing and international financing, good governance, and the political will, as well as capacity building and infrastructures. So ESD must be championed in every nook and cranny of our continent and at every level of the education um, chain, because ESD is a call for action to deliver on our promises and ambitions. In conclusion, excellencies, 
Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, allow me to express my hope that this conference fulfills its promise that together we can work in shaping a sustainable future. As was observed during the conference, young people, especially in Africa, demand an acceleration of sustainability across all sectors. And education is the most powerful tool that we have to address sustainability effectively. Through cooperation, curriculum review, upscaling the teaching profession, enabling environment, harnessing the power of ESD, political will, commitment and clear vision, we shall navigate these challenging times successfully and deliver on education for sustainable development. Lasting gratitude to UNESCO for organizing this UNESCO World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development. Thank you very much for listening. And thank you, Ms. Agbor, for that uh, call to action from the African Union. Now we can hear from Mr. Nicolas Trota, who is the Minister of Education of Argentina. The great challenges which confront humanity are not just getting accentuated, but rather becoming ever more complex and more deep. And just as our educative system and our schools are consolidating not only the only tool, but the main tool to fight these inequalities, the impact of the pandemic was very strong in 2020 and 21 for all of humanity, and especially in our country. And on this basis, we see the challenge of being able to go on continuing to provide education in the framework of very deepening inequalities in Latin America. And at the same time, as we are structuring the transformations in our educational systems, which requires sustainable development of our societies in the short term, first of all, so as to consolidate and reactivate the connectivity agenda with distribution of technological resources sources, particularly in schools that are in the most vulnerable context, and then also to guarantee that school will go on being free and accessible and navigable to all. So we have then also this logic of distribution of materials to make sure that each Argentine family in 2020 and 2021 will be reached. And this is also characterized by the challenge of going back to presential schooling using strict protocols and taking all necessary measures. Our country is trying trying to get through this pandemic with uh, an agenda of priorities for the educational system nationally. On the one hand, presenting to this to the National Congress a new law on education where we are suggesting investment of something like 8% with 6% for obligatory schooling at all levels and then a further 2% for higher education in universities and other tertiary forms of education and also for the training of our teachers. At the same time, to also put central emphasis on the training of our teachers as a tool for transformation and to go on unrolling distance learning simply as an additional vector to support educational efforts. We're going to see in the coming decade an increase in interannual terms year on year that greater than ever before, which we are going to go on consolidating. And in the context of what has been a very important step forward for our country, we had approved just a few days ago in our Senate after having gone through the Chamber of Deputies, an integral environment law which will allow us to apply this agenda in each and every one of our schools, thinking things out together with our educational system and with all the players in that system to have sustainable development with social justice for all in our country. Thank you, Mr. Trota, for that contribution from Argentina. Now we will hear from Ms. Madiha Al-Shaibani, who is the Minister of Education of Oman. Sayyidat Wassada Al-Muhtaramun, Al-Hudur Al-Kareem, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. Ladies and gentlemen, Excellencies, may the peace and blessings of God be upon you. I am delighted to extend to you the greetings of Her Majesty the Sultan of Oman, who wishes you every success at this conference so that we can achieve our common objectives. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the various sessions that were held as part of this conference over the last few days, the roundtables, the debates, which took place incorporating uh, participants from all over the planet, served to attest that education is a priority for the international community. They also demonstrated that we need to work hand in hand so as to adopt joint strategies at the international and national levels with a view to confronting the various challenges we currently face. We believe in education for sustainable development and for that reason we've set up national committees and commissions which are monitoring our implementation of the various goals. Furthermore, the principle of ESD is being mainstreamed throughout our educational programs. This includes topics such as desertification, climate change, biodiversity protection, and sustainable peace. We are seeking to promote an exchange of good practices with our neighbors in the region and further afield. For this reason, we believe that the roadmap we've sketched out, a roadmap for education for sustainable development, is absolutely vital. And that's why last year we launched our own roadmap in our region. In September of last year, we held a regional workshop under the auspices of UNESCO's strategy for TVET. There were three priorities, youth, employment, entrepreneurship, as well as lifelong education. We also covered topics such as the green economy and sustainable economy. In my country, the Sultanate of Oman, we stand convinced that we must sign up to the commitments uh, outlined in the Berlin Declaration. Sustainable peace and education for sustainable development is part and parcel of our international educational agenda, targeting quality education. After all, education is uh, the fulcrum on which the achievement of the other SDGs hinges. This is why we've uh, also adopted a three-point strategy, which is part of our vision. Now, a lot of these uh, points cover education. In addition, we've also adopted policy measures with a view to achieving education sustainable development. Uh, this is all underpinned by a human rights-based approach. Ladies and gentlemen, as we all know, Various countries have been hard hit by the pandemic, and this has uh, hampered their efforts to achieve the various SDGs, specifically SDG 4, education. For this very reason, many countries, such as my own, have had to rethink, to reinvent the way we do things in order to inch closer to the achievement of the this SDG, of this SDG. Together with the Gulf Cooperation Council Regional Office for Education and the UNESCO Office in my country, we've been working very hard so as to implement education for sustainable development. We've been thinking about how to make our educational systems stronger, more resilient in the face of the pandemic. What we need is to provide assistance, whether it be human resources, material resources or expertise to the weakest, most vulnerable countries, so as to help them and ensure that we can all achieve our various objectives, including on education for sustainable development. We're currently confronting myriad challenges. However, we are determined to tackle them. We believe that we are going to meet our goals if we put in the effort. We'll be able to achieve education for sustainable development so that we have a new generation rising up, a generation which believes in a clean, healthy environment, a generation of young people seeking to build fairer societies for the benefit of all humanity. By way of conclusion, I cannot but thank all of the organizers of this conference, specifically the Federal Ministry of Education and Research of Germany, as well as UNESCO. 
I hope that the Berlin Declaration and the outcomes of this conference will contribute to the resounding success of our efforts to achieve education for sustainable development. Thank you very much. May the peace and blessings of God be upon you. Thank you, Ms. Madiha al Shaibani, Minister of Education from Oman, for that message. Now we will hear from Ms. Aishat Ali, Minister of Education from the Maldives. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, Assalamu Alaikum, Good Morning, Good Afternoon, and Good Evening. It is heartening and delightful to meet with you all in spite of the raging pandemic and its impact on schooling around the world. I thank UNESCO for arranging this platform to take stock of our progress in achieving the SDGs and to share our roadmap for ESD for 2030. The Maldives government had placed the top priority on education, as evidenced in the budget. Education appropriation constitutes the highest allocation of the national budget. It is easier to talk the talk than walk the difficult but necessary walk. The government's thinking and policy priorities are reflected in the strategic action plan and the national resilience and recovery plan developed as a response to COVID-19. Both call for catalyzing education provision and prioritizing skills development to build knowledge, human capital, and capabilities. The government affirms the transformational role of education to empower individuals and societies and raise happiness and harmony. The current pandemic has awoken us yet again to the interconnectedness of the world, its vulnerability to epidemics, and the importance of self-reliant, aware communities who value health, climate, disaster, and poverty reduction in sustainable consumption. The rationale for ESD for 2030 has never been more cogent and compelling. Three recent developments in the Maldives will accelerate ESD integration. To begin with, the first ever Education Act stipulates education for sustainable development as an objective of schooling, making it a legal imperative. Second, the major review of the national curriculum is in progress. This will give us the opportunity to integrate the curricular and pedagogical elements of ESD for 2030 in the school curriculum. Third, one of the major focus of the National Resilience and Recovery Plan developed as a response to COVID-19 is on building a more resilient and sustainable economy. Hence, there is a push from the government in advancing policies that support ESD, which is not limited to the education sector, but encompasses all the sectors. It's an example of how the Maldives is trying to advance our policies with elements of ESD. I would like to share one of our projects, the Green School Project. The main objectives of this project are to reduce the environmental footprint at the school level and individual level, to promote eco-literacy of the whole school community, and to enhance climate prosperity by preparing students for a low-carbon future. In alignment with ESD for 2030, the focus of the project is on nurturing a resilient, innovative generation. Time does not allow me to expand on other initiatives. Though we have started work towards ESD for 2030, I would like to highlight that the process of reorienting the formal education system towards sustainable development is not an easy task. And this is an area for which we seek support from UNESCO and our friends, especially for funding our initiatives. Before I conclude, I would also like to stress the importance of commitment on investment in education. As a small island development state, we, the Maldives, need to invest more in preparing people with the knowledge, skills, and values to respond to the adverse effects of climate change and other challenges ahead. We need to invest more on bringing the out-of-school youth in this region back to school and re-engage them in learning. We need to invest more in reshaping the skills development programs and making sure that this region does not fall way behind in achieving the SDG goal four. Firm commitment, investment, and dedication towards achieving SDG 4 and ESD for 2030 are needed for the preservation and for keeping the competitive edge of the of our children and youth, because our common future depends on our present actions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aisha Ali, Minister of Education from the Maldives, for that contribution. And finally, now we will hear from Ms. Matilda Ernkranz, who is the Minister of Education and Research from Sweden. Distinguished colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, uh, I want to 
thank uh, UNESCO and the government of Germany for hosting this conference. Climate change, unequal access to education, gender inequality, poverty, mass loss of biodiversity and undemocratic movements. These are all interconnected challenges. Challenges that cannot be met by one nation alone. We must work together to truly achieve a sustainable development. All young people have a right to be included. This is a matter of equity. Their knowledge and experience are invaluable for the success of the 2030 Agenda. Being a Swedish minister, I am proud of the, of the movement Greta Thunberg has inspired, which gathers millions of young people all over the world, urging us to act now. Sweden has set out to be one of the first fossil-free welfare countries in the world. This guides us in all areas. When it comes to education for a sustainable development, it is integrated at all policy levels of the Swedish education system, from preschool to adult and higher education, as well as in teacher education in lifelong learning, including vocational training, to ensure the transition to sustainable economy and jobs. But policy documents are not enough. Therefore, I want to underline the importance of monitoring and implementation when it comes to bring about a more sustainable world. In Sweden, we have evaluated implementation at our universities and then asked them to follow up on the results. And we are also carrying out an inspection of secondary schools, which indicates that systematic implementation needs to improve. One of Sweden's strengths regarding education for sustainable development is that many parts of our society are engaged, from civil society to universities. I also want to highlight that UNESCO has an essential role in supporting national efforts. Sweden looks forward to the establishment of country initiatives and is currently mapping the national ESD work. This conference, the kickoff of the framework for ESD 2030, must lead our way. And it is up to us to deliver in practice. Better than we do today, every one of us, based on science, but also on equity. The most well-educated and prosperous societies still makes the large, largest ecologi ecological footprints. Education for sustainable development is necessary, and so is implementation and joint action. I also want to add that education for sustainable development must have a human rights-based approach. Full human rights is a fundamental part of a sustainable society. We only have a few more years to achieve the goals in the 2030 agenda, and the time to act is now. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Matilda Ehrenkranz, the Minister of Education and Research of Sweden. And we've now seen the Berlin Declaration presented and endorsed. And we've also seen member states make commitments. I'd like to now bring in two speakers representing the two hosts of this conference, if you will, the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research and UNESCO for some closing remarks. First, I would like to introduce Mr. Christian Luft, the, the Secretary of State of the Federal Ministry of Education and Research in Germany. Uh, Dr. Luft, the floor is yours. Many thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends of Education for Sustainable Development, we're really bringing a historic conference to an end. This conference is historic because of the urgent challenges that confront us, historic because of the great number and diversity of key players, that have had exchanges with one another, and historic because of our resolve to stand behind a strong message from our Berlin Declaration. 
We have now spent two and a half very intensive days working together on different facets of ESD, and I think we're now very well prepared for the decade that stretches out to 2030 before us. All over our plan, at the same time, we talked about our own strategies, actions and intentions. The participation of 85 ministers and then representatives of about 130 countries shows that working together for this new UNESCO program has great impact. We've had very many experts from international organizations, from academia, from civil society, from the business world. We've listened to them and we've seen new ways forward for ESD. The UNESCO report on education and the environment has sent us a, an important message about the urgency of stepping up our work for sustainability and education. And of course, we've also had very diverse visions uh, from the reports of key players in SD from throughout the world about their very concrete educational contexts, and we've heard about innovative projects and best practices in the application of ESD. And so with this very wide range of contributions, we are now, I think, really very properly prepared for the necessary implementation of SDGs in our provinces, regions, communities, and of course also for the building of a more sustainable society. We've also worked very intensively with the very current challenges that confront us and there are very great challenges before us. Climate change, biodiversity, green growth, and the circular economy. Our approach to nature, but also inequalities and health risks, as we've seen, of course, with the pandemic. And of course, with the answers that education and particularly education for sustainable development can bring to these questions. In our discussions, we also talked about the key themes of the new UNESCO program, ESD 2030, that we're going to have to deal with in the coming 10 years. On the one hand, getting a handle, which is not so easy, on transformative action, that is to say behavior of each and every person to bring about a sustainable society. And then on the other hand, dealing with technical progress, including very important subjects like digitalization. Personally, I found this intensive and sometimes also emotional exchange to be very important. The exchanges were important so as to clarify what were the priorities in the new programs, who needed to do what to whom, and to show how high the priority of this whole thing is. But very honestly, Discussions are very important. You cannot leave discussion out of it, but debate and discussion is not everything. Now it's time to act. And we as key players are the people who are called upon to act. And when I say we, I mean politicians, people who deal with educational policy, teachers, young people, and then key players in society, but also in business. And that's why I am particularly proud of the Berlin Declaration, not just because it's been decided upon in Berlin in a digital format, and I think you already know what a great honor it was for us to be a co-organizer of this conference. But we're particularly proud of this Berlin Declaration because it is so strongly worded and so full of substance. And we are committing ourselves to make ESD anchored in all fields of the learning chain. We're dealing with uh, education of small children through school educational training and then an informal training, including trade and vocational training, so as to bring about a true transformation of education as a whole. Now we have to actively work on making this a reality. And with the national conference, it's going to start in just a few minutes. We're going to get down to brass tacks straight away. And you are very warmly welcomed to that conference and that will be interpreted in your languages in the first hours of the conferences as well. But I'd also like to use this opportunity to make one last plea for the importance of communication on 
Yes, Steve. Our Berlin Declaration needs to be broadcast as wide as possible, not simply by us who are members of governments, but also by all of us here, from civil society organizations, from scientific bodies, from economic bodies, and from everyone who has taken part in this conference today. The point is to communicate on ESD in such a way that everyone understands what it's about and what it has to do with their own lives. You know, as well as I do, that ESD is a term that isn't self-explanatory. And for that reason, this commitment by all countries is a very important contribution to bring ESD into the societies that we live in. I thank all of you very warmly for this wonderful conference and contributions that you've made. Um, I would also like to thank particularly the conference organizing team. And this is really a great feat because a digital conference requires much more intensive support as a physical in presentia conference. And we, dear ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, SD partners, we're going to go on having exchanges with one another. Then this transformation for sustainability will only work if we do it together and best of all in the framework of the UNESCO network. I hope that these last days will also bring about new things in the world, that we'll be able to go on exchanging and have our ideas, not simply be ideas, but things that are concretely applied. And I would like to say that I trust you all to bring this about. Many thanks for these wonderful days and best wishes for the coming years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Luft, and to the Ministry of Education and Research for generously supporting this conference. And I'd like to give the final word now to someone who really has been a guiding force over the last three days, Ms. Stefania Giannini, the Assistant Director General of Education at UNESCO. Thank you very much. Uh, State Secretary Christian Luft, uh, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to, a, to the end. We are coming to the end uh, of the World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development after three very inspiring, very intensive days, let me say, honestly. Holding uh, a World Conference uh, in a purely online setting comes uh, with great challenges. We know, we knew from the beginning. It's uh, about not being able uh, to meet together uh, in Berlin, as we hoped. It's about not being able to taste uh, uh, the, 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 the city uh, atmosphere we like uh, and not being able to, to be uh, welcomed by our German hosts there. However, our ability to connect virtually also gave us, is given us uh, other opportunities, uh, diversify somehow our participation. We heard uh, voices really from every single corner of the world in these, these last three days, connected across the globe with people of all ages uh, and uh, walks of life. And this is really an added value, I should say. We come together with our joint conviction that education holds the key to our response to the dramatic crisis uh, the world is facing. So despite its challenges, uh, I can say that it's been a rewarding conference. I can also firmly say that it has been a very successful conference. Let me mention some numbers just to, to see what we are talking about. We had, as, a, as, a, as an overall uh, participation, uh, some more than 13,000. That means uh, 2,800 participants on the conference platform from 161 countries and uh, more than uh, 10,000 uh, viewers uh, of the public live stream. And this is another important dimension I want to, to stress. We have seen strong political will uh, with, with the statements from more than uh, 70 ministers and deputy ministers. And I'm really very grateful to all of those who have uh, participated to uh, the meetings and uh, roundtables organized. We have seen uh, a huge and encouraging amount of dedicated good practices from all across the world, driven by passionate individuals 
and committed organizations. And we have come together to create a strong Berlin Declaration on Education for Sustainable Development, which is the, the outcome of the conference where we are starting from. In this declaration, the entire education community acknowledges uh, the urgency and the scale of the global challenges we are facing, especially the climate emergency. In this declaration, uh, we acknowledge the power of education to turn things around. I should say education being a, a big part of the solution. Not any education of any education, of an education that builds the knowledge, creates the awareness and leads to the necessary big change, disruptive change we need from knowledge to, our, to awareness, uh, to action, uh, to transform the world. And in order to be transformative, we know education uh, should transform itself. And education needs uh, to, to change the model and to, and to include many dimensions that has been discussed uh, during these last three days. That is why we have committed to make sustainability and climate action a core element of education, investing in teacher training, in whole school approaches, and into cross-sectoral collaboration. The cross-sectoral dimension is another uh, evident uh, outcome of this conference, and it's a call for action which is not simply directed to educators, and ministers of education, but all the main stakeholders which are responsible of taking this commitment and uh, carrying on. Learning across sectors is indeed key. The challenges we are facing are multifaceted. The education sector will not be able to confront all of them alone. UNESCO role is a is a central one, and we are happy to take this uh, responsibility, share responsibility with all of you. UNESCO will provide all our possible support to take forward the results of this uh, conference as foreseen in the ESD for 2030 roadmap. We are grateful for the support of our partners to implement the roadmap itself, among them the governments of Japan and Sweden. We'll just listen. Uh, the uh, Swedish minister with clear uh, mind and words on that. And hopefully many other uh, countries that will come on board, I'm sure. We will support country level action and capacity building, which are two other concrete dimensions we have to develop in the coming months and years. We will provide guidance and support to teachers and other key personnel of the education sector. And we will facilitate exchange of good practices and mutual learning through a global network on an ESD. We already seen uh, and heard during these three days uh, that many things are already happening on the ground. And so it's important that we build a common place, a platform where these good practices can be valorized and can be somehow scaling up. We will also facilitate exchange of, uh, um, of uh, um, you know, knowledge and content that can become a part of the curriculum development that we are talking about. We will support definitely monitoring the progress of ESD across the world. This will be part of our monitoring of target point 4.7 of the SDGs will complement this with additional data collection and analysis to have a clear picture where countries stand and to be able to uh, implement the right policies at the right time. We'll also make sure that ESD continues to be recognized as a central element of the global education ad agenda. We know that there is a, a big momentum this year. For many reasons we already discussed in this conference, uh, there will be an important critical meeting at the end of this year in Glasgow, the COP26. Uh, and uh, uh, we know that uh, creating this bridge, these linkages between education and the other sectors is critical. 
However, it's important that it's not simply here and now, but we can go ahead with this new cultural mindset, so to say, to develop a real powerful ESD agenda. And uh, we'll do this uh, in full alignment with SDG4 coordination and other important international agendas that uh, are in charge to be developed, in particular, uh, already mentioned the UN FCCC process. Uh, but I, let me mention something we heard about in this conference, like the Pope Francis initiative uh, of a new global compact on education, which is very much grounded on the same, on the same attention to uh, ESD and 4.7. And we will do this with important partners, such as the new mission 4.7 initiative. Well, dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, the conference would have not been possible without the support and the partnership of our German hosts. And let me say a few words from the bottom of my heart on behalf of UNESCO and myself about that. I would like to reiterate my hurtful thanks to the government of Germany, in particular the Federal Ministry of Education and Research for the generous funding and the trustful collaboration along the way. Thank you to the German Commission for UNESCO for its uh, advisory support along the preparation process, which is a long one, I can assure, and a very, and a very exciting one. Sometimes the process is as well important uh, as, the, as the product, and this is the case. Thank you also to the ministry, other partners who work day and night to th make this conference a success in this challenging and new online environment. I also really thank my dedicated dream team in UNESCO's uh, education sector, which has uh, shepherded the preparation through many challenges uh, with a lot of passion, a lot of knowledge, a lot of commitment to these topics. Really a big thanks to all of them. A special thanks go, of course, to the technical staff that has overcome many challenges to ensure the smooth running of this big online conference could happen. We are very grateful to them. We usually don't see technical experts and people who help us. They are uh, usually behind the scenes, behind the platform, as you say, but they are critical people, especially in this new normal. Thank you to the excellent interpreters, and thank you to all participants who have uh, shown dedication and enthusiasm that I'm sure uh, will continue in the coming days and years around this uh, common mission. Well, to conclude, I should say that much work lies ahead to transform our world through the education and learning, to make it better place for all living beings. The conference has, said, has, has laid an excellent basis for all these efforts. We turn our eyes now to other milestone already mentioned COP26 in Glasgow late this year above all. We will continue to work to scale up education for sustainable development because we know that transformative learning for people and the planet is an accessory for our an accessory component, an accessory factor, enabling factor for our survival and our uh, uh, and the, the heritage we are giving uh, to future generations. We have only one planet. We know we don't have a plan B. The time to learn and act for this mission, these shared responsibilities, is absolutely here and now. And I thank you all of you very much for being with us and taking with us this important commitment in front of young people, in front of all citizens in the world who are convinced as we are that through education, in education, we can find a big part of the solution we need. I thank you very much. And the conference now is really closed. 
And thank you, Ms. Giannini. As we heard there, this conference has kicked off this ESD for 2030 agenda, but the work certainly is not done. In fact, it is just the beginning. The real work of implementing the framework now starts. Now, just after this international conference wraps up, the German national conference will begin. It will go from this afternoon into the evening. So for all of the German speakers and watchers out there, please do join us for that. And then, Ms. Giannini mentioned this as well, next week, a regional technical meetings will go into the country initiatives. There are regional meetings in North America, Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the Arab states. And the information on those regional meetings are in the chat, the links to those. So do join those. And then next year, UNESCO will organize five regional meetings to help member states implement the ESD for 2030 framework. So certainly there is a lot of work to be done, and we hope you continue to join us for that process. Now, you can imagine that organizing such a conference like this is no easy feat, and this is one of the first that UNESCO has organized in this format, entirely virtual. So you will receive an evaluation form uh, per email, and we would like you to fill that out and let us know what you thought of the conference, what you thought uh, worked well, where there might be some room for improvement, and all of your input will help shape uh, the future conferences, the conferences that come now uh, down the road. So that just leaves me to say thank you again to all of you for joining us. I hope you will join me in extending a warm and hearty round of applause virtually uh, to all of the hundreds of people from the ministry, from UNESCO, the technical staff and crew, the translators, who all worked around the clock to make sure that this conference was a success. So as I said, this is just the beginning. We hope to see you again soon. Thank you and goodbye.